Hey, Devondre, first off, congrats. Thank um, you. Aaron Rodgers talked the other day about the moment in the locker room when Matt announced your first team all pro honor. He said he broke down the team and said, from day one, you guys made me feel important and special and a part of something special. Just what has Green Bay meant to you this season and this group of guys? Because Aaron said you saying that made him emotional. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like I've been a couple different places at this point, and it's little things such as like, I remember my first day of training camp and I was sitting on the ground stretching and uh, Aaron came up and introduced himself to me. And at first I was like, uh, is he joking? Or, you know, like, I know who you are, but it's little things like that, you know, like nobody being too big, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's just a blessing and an honor to be such part of such a historical organization. And I'm just thankful. Next up, Tom Silverstein. Hey, Devondre. Uh, during the season, you're, the places that you've lined up on this defense, you know, I've seen you in the slot, seen you out wide, seen you single line, inside linebacker, you know, up in the A gaps. What does it take to play that many spots? And then to what degree do you think that helps just function against offenses who you know, like the 49ers, we're going to show you all kinds of different looks. Um, it's definitely tough. You know, I'm not going to lie about that, but it's something that I'm used to. Uh, I did it the first four years of my career in Atlanta um, on a weekly basis. I went to the game having to know three or four different positions and playing three or four different positions. So, I mean, I, I, I get it. I'm used to it. I understand it. Um, but like I said, it's definitely not easy. You got to lock it in and take it one play at a time because every play is different. And um, in terms of going against an offense like San Fran, you know, with as many looks as they give us, it's, got, it's going to be kind of hard for them to kind of like figure out where I'll be as well, you know, because, you know, like disguising is a huge part of playing defense, you know, like if you just line up and play, teams can pick you apart and, you know, with uh, some of the things I feel like I'm really good at, it makes it hard for teams to, to kind of like isolate me or put me in compromising positions because I can guard wide receivers, I can guard tight ends, and I can guard running backs. So it's kind of hard to create mismatches. Steve McGargy. Congratulations. I was just wondering, in your Instagram post after getting all pro, you had talked about some of the stuff you had heard after last season. Like maybe you were on the back end of your career, you weren't playing the same, that stuff. When did you hear that? Was that from the Cardinals or just when you were kind of looking for a new team during free agency? And was there any particular criticism that cut you even deeper? Was there anything that was particularly painful that you'd heard there? Uh, I ain't gonna get too much into detail on it, but I've heard it several different places. Um, you kind of hit on it. I heard it from some some people that I didn't expect to hear it from. Um, reporters, everybody, you know, everybody just kind of counted me out. Um, I dealt with a lot of stuff last year in Arizona that I never talked about because nobody really cares at the end of the day. People just care about results and, you know, uh, the, I was just honest with myself, you know, I was injured. I didn't feel like I played the best, but I didn't feel like I played terrible, but that's not what everybody else thought. Honestly, I don't really care about other people's opinions, but I just knew what was at stake, you know, so I bet on myself as I always will, you know, I just felt like I needed to put myself in the best position to succeed and not where, you know, I'm, I'm trying to learn three or four different positions at one time because, I mean, that's tough on anybody. I wanted to go somewhere where I just had a simple job responsibility and I, I was just allowed to play football and be me. And that's what the Packers told me they would let me do. They kept their word and I kept mine. Wes? Hey, Dre, do you got me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, I wanted to go back, if I could, to, to Friday. Uh, from what Aaron and Devontae both said, Matt kind of told everybody, you know, that there was two that were obvious and then mentioned there was a third. At that moment, did you think it might be you? And just how did that news hit you when, when Matt did say that, that you'd made first team all pro? I mean, I kind of had an idea. Um, I knew it had to be me or maybe two other people that I had in mind. But, you know, 
I'm I'm going not going to say I was surprised, but I was, if that makes sense, simply for the fact that I just didn't feel like I was being talked about as much as some of the other backers across the league. You know, I just, you know, I, I, I understand how it goes, you know, like people talk about who they want to talk about and the facts are the facts. I just, I felt like there wasn't too many uh, linebackers that outplayed me this year. And I definitely felt like I was deserving, but I had my mind set on like, I can't get offended or I can't take it personal if it doesn't happen. You know, I just gotta, I gotta keep working, keep on getting better and maybe next year, but it worked out. And it was just a moment that I'll never forget because it was a goal that I, I set for myself and I didn't tell too many people about it. So it was definitely a warm feeling for me knowing that I accomplished something I set out to do. Marcus Eversall. Hey, Devondre, you got me? Yeah. So following up on that, you said, like when you signed, going back to June, what did you expect out of yourself? Did you think that you'd be stepping in as a starter right away? Is like that where you set the bar or were you thinking, I mean, you said all pro was a goal. What were you expecting out of yourself when you signed? I mean, I know I'm a starter. I know I'm a top five, top 10 linebacker in this league. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier. You know, people have their opinions, but what I feel is fact. Since the, the day one, I've always felt like I've been a top 10 backer in this league. And if people watched the tape, they would have saw that themselves. But, you know, people develop opinions and they say what they want to say. And it is what it is. But... I mean, I, I signed here expecting to be a starter from day one, and I knew I could do it, and I, I knew I would do it. But, you know, obviously not everybody thought that, but it is what it is. Bill Huber. Hey, Devondre, congratulations. Um, so I, 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 I listened to what you're saying before about what other people were thinking of you, but when you're seeing all these other linebackers get signed for big contracts in, in March and April, and you probably know you're at least as good, if not better than all those guys. What the hell are you thinking? I mean, at that point, my honest thought process is like, what am I doing wrong? You know, like, I, like you just said, it's, it's, it's a league full of good players. But I mean, I feel like I'm just as good, if not better than all these guys. So to see them get, you know, some of these big deals they're getting. And here I am, keep telling, being told that I have to basically prove myself. And I'm like, I don't feel like there's nothing I need to prove. Just check the tape. Tape don't lie. You know, like I've been producing for years and years and years in every single role that I've been asked to do. And, you know, everybody's whole question is like, what's so different? How did you just become this elite player all of a sudden? Like I've been the same player my whole career. My job responsibilities have just been different. Like I've never been a true Mike. I've never been put in the position to make plays week in and week out. And that was something that I, I was very adamant about coming into the uh, off season. Like I was going to sign somewhere that allowed me to, to be the guy. And like I said, Green Bay allowed me that opportunity. And I'm, I'm just very thankful for it, you know, for them believing in me when a lot of people kind of didn't. Um. So, Bondra, you, you made a reference to it that you've even had to cover wide receivers. And I swear that there was like a third down in the Minnesota game when you had to cover Justin Jefferson in the slot. I don't know if you remember that. I, I sort of, I, I don't know if I'm as, um, dreaming that that happened, but do you remember that? And how does that happen, you know, on a third down that a linebacker gets on Justin Jefferson? Like I said earlier, it just goes back to my uh, my 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 coaching staff understanding what my skill set is and trusting me. You know, like I've been doing it all year from the Tyler Boys, the Adam Thielens, the Jeffersons, like the Kelseys, all these top pass catchers. Like if you just go back and check the tape, I've been guarding these dudes all year long. And over the course of my career, I've been doing it, you know, like. This ain't nothing new. I've been doing it for six years now. So I'm not surprised about it. But, you know, people develop opinions and they, they say what they want. And that's, that's what it is. Wes? 
I know you got the the first two years in the league. You were in the playoffs both years with Atlanta. Just just wondering what this run means to you, and and just to have a chance now to be back in the postseason. Uh, I'm ecstatic. Uh, like you just said, I haven't been to the playoffs in over three years, so I'm just trying my best to kind of contain my energy throughout the week and being able to save it all for Saturday afternoon. But I'm very excited. You know, it's a great opportunity. You know, you just you can never take these opportunities for granted. And I found that out over the past three years, you know, like I came in, uh, we went to the Super Bowl my first year and almost went back again uh, my second year. So I kind of, you know, after those first two years, I was like, man, this, this is what it is. Like, it's not what everybody thought. And then going three years straight without making the playoffs, you learn, man, it's, it's tough. Like this league is hard. Every year is a new year. And it's not about what you did last year or the year before. It's about being consistent every year. And, you know, uh, the, the past two years, this is they, they've been a really consistent organization around here. And the consistency shows. And I think now it's time for us to take that next step and push it a little bit further. We'll do a couple more for Devondre, Bill Huber. Hey, Devondre, um, I, I realize that you have other things in your mind right now, like championships and all that, but is this what you had in mind when you came here to set yourself up to remind everybody just how good you are to be now when, you know, free agency starts here in what, two months or whatever the hell it is that you're going to be a man in demand? Yep. Uh, that was my whole thought process from the time I signed just to kind of reintroduce myself, you know, like casuals don't really know who I am, but people who watch tape, people who know, the game of football, you know, I get told week in and week out from the people I compete against. You're a hell of a player and you always have been, you know, I'm just glad that people are starting to realize it. So that just kind of makes me feel good, you know, something I've always known, but to hear it from other people, you know, you always kind of need that reassurance. So yeah, that was, that was a huge goal of mine, just kind of reestablishing myself. I'm not dealing with any more little stupid nagging injuries. I'm fresh, I feel great, and I, I felt that way the whole year, and I, I think it showed in my play. So that's just the most important goal for me at this point, just continuing to stay healthy, honing in on the details, and taking it one day at a time. Kyle? Hey, Devondre, I got kind of a two-parter here. Um, did, you know, this past summer when no teams were really calling you, did that affect your mental health at all? That's very false information. I had several teams calling me, uh, okay. probably about five or six, but I turned them down because like I said earlier, I was just looking for the right situation. Right. Um, you know, that's that's a rumor that's been going around that I wanna kind of clarify is very false. I had offers from day one, but I just didn't feel like it was a good situation for me. Kind of like the Arizona situation, you know, I just felt like I was behind the eight ball from the jump. Like I, I never had a full off season. I was put in a prove it deal and I, I didn't really have the, the proper time that I needed to get comfortable within that scheme. And, you know, I, I made the most of the situation, but I just didn't feel like I was put in a good situation from the jump. I made the most of it, but it is what it is. But that's a very false rumor. I definitely had other opportunities, but I was just waiting for the right one. Well, I'm glad you could clear that up here. Um, yeah. And, you know, kind of going off what Wes said earlier, with so many people counting you out this past offseason, what would it mean to you personally to end the season on top with a Super Bowl? I mean, it, it's a fairy tale situation, you know, like when you think about it and you, you, you're talking to yourself and some of your close colleagues about it, you know, it's one of those situations where you're like, yeah, this is the goal and I know it's going to be, super, super hard simply for the fact that, like I said, you know, a lot of people counted me out. So I'm already on the outside looking in, but, you know, I've already been able to accomplish one part of it, you know, but it's still a moving train. They're still moving pieces, you know, like that's just one step one. Like we, we got to take care of the 49ers on Saturday and then keep on pushing, you know, but the ultimate goal is to win a Super Bowl. That's what we're all here for. And, if you aren't here for that, then you're in the wrong place. So it'll be a, a, a perfect, perfect dream come true if, if we can make that happen. But like I said, we got to take it one day at a time. We still got about 48 plus hours before kickoff. So 
We just got to keep on pushing, keep on honing in on the details, making any type of adjustments or corrections we need to make and be ready to go come Saturday afternoon. Last one, Marcus Eversall. Hey, Devondre, looking at the 49ers and their running game and blocking schemes and some of the stuff they do, a couple of years ago, the Packers had a lot of issues against this team. Obviously, you weren't here at the time, but you were in the same division last year in Arizona. How does their scheme and what they do on the ground stress your position specifically? Um, I think the hardest part about it is uh, they have a lot of what we like to call eye candy. So a lot of jet motions, a lot of shifts, a lot of pre-snap stuff to basically get your eyes in the wrong position. Like it's not a complicated scheme, but it's more predicated on we're going we're gonna to try to make you mess up. You know what I mean? So I feel like as long as you play with great eyes and you read your keys, it's not a super hard scheme to stop. I mean, it's not like they're doing a lot of gap schemes like powers and counters and all that stuff. It's a lot of stretches and a lot of misdirection. So as long as you, you have your eyes in the right place, you just got to hit your way through problems.